Hey traders, Mike Sir here. Do you ever feel that the stock market is rigged in favor of the rich and powerful? That somehow they're getting wealthier while the majority of people are still struggling to make ends meet? Well, you're not wrong. In fact, according to this article, the billionaires in America got 44% richer during the pandemic, while more than 80 million people lost their jobs. In today's part one of a two-part video series, I'm going to show you in total 10 ways that the rich manipulate the stock market and game the system to make millions or even billions. This way you can better understand how the financial systems work and learn to take more control of your financial investments. So let's get started. One way that some of the rich have gotten extremely wealthy in the stock market is through insider trading. Now, Insider trading involves trading in a public company stock by someone who has non-public material information about a company. Now, insider trading is illegal, and I'm not saying that everyone who is rich has committed insider trading, but there was one high-profile case that I already talked about in a previous video. It involved Stephen Cohen, the billionaire hedge fund manager, and if you want to watch that video, I will include the link at the end of this video. Stephen was involved in a massive insider trading case brought on by the SEC that revealed some people working for Steve's firm SAC Capital routinely skirted rules surrounding non-public information and allowed the firm to make big profits in the process. Specifically, there was a case that got SAC in big trouble and involved Matthew Martoma, a portfolio manager who helped make the firm over 276 million dollars in illegal profits based on tips from doctors who leaked knowledge about a drug's clinical trials before it was announced to the public. Stephen ultimately avoided jail time due to how he distanced himself from the trades, but it resulted in nearly $2 billion in fines for the firm and a two-year ban from managing outside money for Stephen. A relatively small fine and basically a slap on the wrist for Stephen. Now, unfortunately for Matthew, he was not too lucky as he received a nine-year jail sentence and had to forfeit his $9.38 million bonus that he earned from the trade. Now, I'm sure that insider trading still takes place in the stock market because it's just too difficult to prove that someone profited based on non-public information. However, let's just say that you made a million dollars on a trade without having ever bought stocks before then you'll definitely be getting a call from the regulators. Did you know that prior to 2012, there was a legal way to make money by insider trading? Now, pretty crazy, right? But it was only available for members of the US Congress and select government employees. Now, before I tell you how they can do that, let's take a look at the top 20 list of members of the US Congress by wealth. Now you can see their net worth at the last column with the top six members, each having at least a net worth of over a hundred million dollars. Now I'm wondering, how did they make that money? But wait, maybe that government employees in the US, you know, they get paid a lot. Well, let me show you the yearly salaries of the top members of the US Congress. Now looking at here, the highest ranking person in Congress is the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and that position pays $223,000 per year. But wait, maybe they were already rich prior to being elected. Well, on April 4th, 2012, then US President Obama signed into law that prohibits lawmakers from trading on inside information gained from their privileged position in the US government. Now, under these provisions, U.S. legislators can't use material non-public knowledge which they generally receive in the briefing to profit from trading the stock market. However, this law did nothing to prevent members of Congress from acting based on inside information. Now, a perfect example of this is when in 2020, a number of U.S. legislators sold their stocks following intelligence briefings on COVID and avoided the US stock market's huge drop in March. Among the notable sellers was Senator Richard Burr and his wife, who sold between $628,000 and $1.7 million in stock on February 13th, 
days before the U.S. stock market recorded a series of declines. Now, Senator Burr claimed his sales were based on publicly available information and not insider knowledge. And you know what happened to him? Nothing. No member of Congress got into trouble. In fact, the Department of Justice dropped all insider trading investigations into Senator Burr. This is again another example how the game is rigged for little guys like us. Before I talk about the next way that the rich take advantage of the little guys, please take a moment to like this video. I would really appreciate your support. Okay, let me share with you some disturbing statistics. Now, according to new data from the S&P Dow Jones Indices, 60.3% of large cap equity fund managers underperformed the S&P 500 index in 2020. This means that if you buy an index fund that tracks the S&P 500 performance, then you'll be outperformed more than half of the fund managers out there. In addition, these fund managers charge a fee that is typically higher than buying an index fund like an exchange traded fund or ETF where you can buy it on the stock exchange. So why would you pay extra for a money manager who can't even beat the index? Well, the reason is because they make you believe that they can manage your funds well and control risk better. Or they just prey on the fact that you don't know anything about the financial markets. So this is why you really need to educate yourself. In 2005, I had the opportunity through my network to meet a portfolio manager at one of the biggest investment firms in New York City at the time. Now, I'm not going to name the firm or this individual for privacy reasons, but I was super excited to meet this gentleman who I was told managed hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, at that time, I had been trading for almost six years and started to have some success, but I wanted to pick his brain on how I can trade better and ultimately make bigger returns. Well, I went up to his Manhattan office tower and got straight to the point of asking him about his trading experiences and how he picked stocks. Then we started talking about technical analysis and chart reading. And I told him that you know I was pretty good at analyzing charts on whether a stock was likely to go up or down. So he goes to me and says, Mike, why don't you pull up a chart and tell me what you think of this stock? So he directs me to his computer on his desk and I pull up a chart of this you know, obscure tech stock that I never even heard of. Then I proceeded to draw my trend lines, my support and resistance price levels and analyze the chart of this specific tech company. Now while I'm analyzing the stock, he tells me that this stock is primed to head to at least $17 per share or even higher and actually he had over a million shares in it. Now at that time, it was trading around $11 per share. Now after analyzing the chart, I walked him through my analysis and told him that it looks like the price is going to go lower because it broke this big support level. And I said actually without any hesitation that it looks like it's going to go down to at least $9. And I told him, you know, you gotta be careful here because it looks like the sellers are in control. Now I quickly stopped talking and actually just realized uh, what I actually just said. You know, here I was telling a portfolio manager on Wall Street who manages hundreds of millions of dollars in one of the most prestigious firms on Wall Street that he was wrong on his trade. And you know, I was thinking to myself, oh man, he's going to kick me out of his office. But you know what he said next to me? And this actually really surprised me. He said, Mike, don't worry we're going to push it back up. Now then he proceeded to end our meeting and afterwards I remember standing in the lobby of the building, you know, trying to reflect on what I just learned from him. Now I realized that actually I didn't learn anything new about how he managed money. And certainly I realized that he knew very little about how to read charts. But there was one lesson that I learned and that was money managers who had access to hundreds of millions of dollars can afford to keep buying stocks and eventually the price would go back up. You see, if you have access to big or unlimited funds, you will eventually be right and make money from your investments. Now, a perfect example of this was the video that I did on a trader who mistakenly made $10 million. And you can also watch that video at the end. Now, do you guys want to know what happened to the stock price of that company? Well, 
we were actually both right. It did go down to $9 soon after our meeting, but it would eventually go to $17 and actually hit a high of $20 per share before collapsing in 2008 during the financial crisis. Let me share with you guys another story of another money manager that I met many years ago at an investment conference. Now, after the conference ended, we all as a group headed to a bar and started drinking. Now, everyone's sharing their opinions and stories about the financial markets. And this particular money manager, who was probably in his late 20s, started talking about this high flying tech stock, which had already doubled in value in a very short period of time and how he's going to keep buying it. Now, sometimes I'm a little bit blunt and I said, well, the stock price has gone up pretty fast. Aren't you worried that the price is going to reverse and drop? Well, he responded by saying, I got to make my year end bonus and it can't be lower than last year. And I said, well, aren't you concerned that you're going to lose money for your clients? Now, this gentleman was obviously under the influence of alcohol. So he blurted something about not caring about his clients or his investors. Now, what this gentleman said made total sense to me about how money managers worked. You see, they make a big chunk of their income from performance bonuses, like how a typical hedge fund charges a 2% management fee plus a 20% performance fee. So when it's a hot market or it's a bull market, they have to milk as much as possible in terms of income for themselves because they all know that when a bear market comes along, they're not going to make as much. In addition, I'm not saying all money managers think this way, but some of them, they don't really care about their investors. You see, it's not really their money that they're trading with. And if they lose it all, well, they can just blame, you know, the market's really bad. You know, it's very, very difficult to make money in this market. But if they make a lot of money for the investors, they get a really nice chunk of that. Now, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please note that part two of the two part series is coming soon. Hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you'll be notified when part two comes out. I'll see you in the next video.